Good morning, I don't have my tripod on the thing and my camera be heavy, hang on. I'm going over to Karen to record our chitty chat video. Well, actually she's coming over to me because those barrels that we bought at the salvage yard last week, um, we have to try and fit them. We got a home delivery to my house and we're gonna put two barrels, one in my car and one in Karen's car. So I'm gonna give you also, also, I flew back late from Chelsea last night. I look knackered. It's gonna be one of them days. Karen got a new coffee machine, so she said she's gonna caffeinate me. I'll give you a walk around Karen's gar garden as well. So if you haven't been around it or checked out her channel, because we're gonna film it in her garden. And she has um, kept an eye on any questions as well that have popped in. I think she put up a question box on her Instagram as well last week. So we're gonna have the garden chit chats, Q and A kind of styly, but you know, you know how it is, we end up rambling and going off on tangents. <laughs> so that's the plan. She's just messaged me there to say she's on the way, but my boiled egg is only getting gone. <laughs> so she may wait. <laughs> I know there was loads of garden content in Thursday's video with Chelsea and stuff. So for my regular viewers who just watched the Thursday video who are more into the home stuff, I'm sorry, it's just one of those weeks where it's a bit garden heavy. It'll balance out. There's been loads of real makeovers that you can catch up on if you've missed them as well. But next Thursday I do, or Thursday coming, I do have like a sewing um, kind of video. I went to the fabric shop as well. But anyway, I'm waffling. Me boiled egg, hang on, I need to put it in. <laughs> oh, hello. I am in Karen's garden. She's just in making a coffee and she's gonna give me a little walk around. But look at her little cottage garden area with the little pots and everything. So I'm gonna wait for her and then I'm gonna get her to walk around these cute little nooks in her garden and then we're gonna film the chitty chats. Okay, so Karen is going to show us. Also, apologies because the mic will pick up Karen, but I might sound like I'm buried in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and she is. This so, is your new border. This is my new border. So I joked at this last October, um, right before I was getting like eye surgery, and I was like, oh my god, I have to dig it. And the reason why I did this border was because I wanted it to be an extension of like all the pots and stuff. Oh, this is really nice. So like, this is what. I love this cottage garden area and containers. It's just, it gives me so much joy. And this nook is so cute, so I pretty. Love it so much. I love that it's pots as well and you can just move them around move as them around. they. Exactly, so as things finish, like this is always going to look like completely different because yeah. I'll be able to kind of mix and match. And I was just saying to Catherine earlier, what I've learned over the last couple of years is that having like one, one or two plants in one pot will kind of work better because as like ones go over you can kind of like take them out move them around and have like like the cat mint is like a proper display it's in pots yeah. so you probably could do with planting it out and um, but maybe on that it looks lovely in full year. though yeah and these fox gloves oh i love them so much i noticed in my last video that i just looked to like touch plants <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're tactile though i love tactile. it and i love how the bees go right into I these think the... smell that i'm not gonna hold my I can't remember what, agastache or something. Oh, it's very perfumey. Yeah. It has a cat minty smell off it. Definitely smells minty. Minty. So, and they, they're a couple of like new little bits that, it's like a geranium, it's called Catherine Deneuve. And then this. Ooh, Catherine Deneuve. Catherine Deneuve. Oh, she's pink. She's pink and she has kind of, you see the little, you see it there. So there, it's not like a traditional oh, yes. leaf on, of a geranium. Yeah, it's like a, a yeah, real petally or something. Yeah, so. We'll see anyway, I'm just gonna leave them there for now and figure out if this is like the right spot for them. But like I split up geraniums that are Oh these are gonna be fab. That's I don't love these that's guys in the back. I only got them last week's. So they're like pr primula a primula labras. And we had a garden day out somewhere. Remember the day that we got it was like last year the day before and we got facials. Oh down. yes, and we it's somewhere in Newbridge, yeah. yeah. And so they had these like in different colours and so these look, these want to be in like kind of a damp shady area and that's where, what that is essentially so. And your bird bath is looking amazing. <sighs> yeah, I love how actually you've extended it down so when you start like back here yeah. and as you kind of walk back down and once all these grow out and in I'm the next few weeks. I'm going to be able to plant annuals, I might do like pot piece and stuff. So I planted these in the ground, these were in pots here last year 
and they seem so much fuller and happier now this year, which is great. And um, yeah, that's the bird bath that I got last year down in the Euro Salvage, the Salvage yard that we were at last week. It's really um, nice. But can I just say, if you don't have the budget for something like this, <laughs> see this? Yeah. Every bird. So this is just like a little tray that, you know, like a little plastic tray, plant tray. Put yeah. a rock in it. Every bird, like they <laughs> come to that, like they love it so much. <laughs> So, any yeah. bit of water, like it's, it's just so good. Like they love it, like, and I'm like, there's like a little fancier one here, but you know what? I think the sometimes one. the stone baths, I cleaned mine out mm -hmm. and they won't go into it. And I think they think it's either too clean or they can't see the reflection in the water. Uh, when there's a little bit of dirt in it, they're all in it. Yeah. But I think maybe the colour, they, they can maybe, see the yeah. reflection of the water better. So I'm going to put more pots here now just to kind of give this, I want this to be enclosed around yeah. or, or, or by plants and stuff. So this is absolutely on the wonk, like myself. But, um, <laughs> Both of us are on the wonk today, as we said. <laughs> this is like my third. I'm going to be seeing sounds and a little We're bit. We're going to be seeing sounds. <laughs> oh, look at your strawberries. So yeah, we've just kept strawberries in pots um, and like there's more there and they're flying it. Is this your the new raised bed? This is the new raised bed. Quick crop. So quick, quick crop. And the idea behind this, I think I'm going to put like either beans or peas down this end and put like some tomatoes uh, here. So I've never put tomatoes in veg beds. I've usually grown them in pots. So I'm going to put some here, some in pots. I'm going to do carrots here as well, like little baby oh, ones. Cool. And then I found these yesterday that I had forgotten. Oh, nasturtium. To kind of, they're trailing, so I might be able to take nice. away some of the harshness of this. Love this simple idea with this string for them to yeah. cling on to. I just was whatever I had. It's really I mean, clever. You do like chicken wire if you wanted, because I don't want the, oh, yeah. the flowers just to be here. I want it to be like a wall. Yeah. So as they grow up, so I have some on that side as well. Ooh, they're starting to attach. Yeah. This is a lovely section here with the rose, and then you, the olive tree. It's like a lovely screened area. Yeah, I wanted this to feel like a room. I wanted like the patio to feel like a room and then here to feel like a room as well. So trying to just build up that little bit of structure but without it being too yeah. hard, like lines or like... Really when hard. these arches fill up, they're gonna look so good. So good, thank you for giving it back to me. You're so welcome. It's <laughs> like you could grow up if you didn't have um, like sweet peas, you could grow like peas or beans or tomatoes even yeah. off the arches and then be able to pick them. So, it looks so good. Now I like this little, I need to weed this story of my life. <laughs> Is this sweet corn? This is sweet corn. So this bed, this is one of the ones that I got from the Malhide Garden Centre a couple of years Not ago now. Two years ago. It it's was lockdown, higher, wasn't it? It was. It yeah. was higher. It was good quality. Um, and this one here is from Quick Crop. And it's like smaller. But like it does the job. I think oh, I thought they were euro. the same. This no, is the one different one. You don't this is screws. a bit higher. Yeah. These all just slap, slap together. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm after doing... Ooh, Got a ceiling, so I'm going to do the three sisters planting here. So have like the sweet corn. I sowed bean seeds and peas and stuff. So we'll see what happens. And then here is going to be pe ah, God, stuff. What happened here? <laughs> this is going to be peas, mm -hmm. and I think maybe carrots. So I had the sweet corn mm -hmm. in this one last year. So you're not supposed to. It's rotation, the same crop isn't it? Yet. Yeah. Apparently so. Is it your wisteria? Wisteria in amongst weeds. Love it. I got that in little. The first lockdown, I think it's like two ninety nine. Yeah. Two ninety nine for a wisteria is very good. It's two ninety nine. Oh, I broke them. But um, we'll see. I like. I love like roses. I was just saying to Catherine, like I have a rambling. Is that rambling or climbing? I think this one here is a rambler. So I'd love to have something like this because it's real lush up the wall. Like imagine, you know, the French pinky ones. Yeah. Wouldn't that be gorgeous? So I just keep tying those in, and then if that goes up higher, so be it. Showers in. Oh, look at your potatoes. Now I need to. This is the growing station. This, this is where the is, action happens. <laughs> but I need to fill that up. I don't have the whole bags are full of compost. But yeah, two bags of potatoes. I have this needs to be sorted out here. But like here on the table, I, have, I still have to plant out. I have like lots oh, of tomatoes. Look at this small, loot. Too small to plant out. And um, Karen does yet. have a slug problem. Just to, for anyone at home, so oh. I'd say you're probably she's been protective of young plants and rightly so like look at her dahlias they're like, she has them raised up so the slug won't come so like this one i think is going to be big enough to look at oh, sorry look slug snots on that <laughs> like here <laughs> so even then they're still not but anyway listen next year i will tackle the slugs see i've got like sunflowers i've got like some tomatoes and stuff so this is I've such got, like, a, a lot of tomato. a few different varieties of tomatoes and 
also. These are lovely. What are these? They're, uh, beans. Oh, they're beans. Yep. They're a lovely flower. Lovely flower, and the bees are loving them as well. So I need to plant those out. This is like the theme of the, my life. That's okay. <laughs> everyone is in the same boat. I think everyone at home can relate because we all need to plant things out. And because things just, were so slow, slow germinating and yeah. growing. So and like here it gets a bit of the sun. Now we can't eat at this table. <laughs> <laughs> Does <laughs> anybody <laughs> eat at their actual table? You're so kind. Sorry, I just saw this. I got pee. <gasps> We so got these are early, oh yeah, the early half point. So this plant only gets up like about that tall. Would you like a pea? Who we eat them? Yeah, it once there's no slug snot on it. <laughs> Here, I'll let you pick your own pea. You pick me one and then we'll eat it when pick we're sitting pea. down. Right, we're gonna start doing our cheeky chats now. Okay. <laughs> Hang on, you can come a little bit closer to me. <laughs> you can sit on my lap. <laughs> Action. Okay, yeah. welcome back to uh, oh, thanks. Um, welcome back to episode two slash three because you, we did some chats. And remember that video? That's how the cheeky chat videos began. That was good times back in the day. So you have first of all apologies. Both myself and Karen are like two feral cats today. <sighs> we are overtired, highly caffeinated, and Lord knows what is going to happen <laughs> in the like. Somebody who shall remain be? nameless. Oh, I need Her a name starts into. with C and ends in Atherin. <laughs> <laughs> I went out to collect the barrels that we bought in um, thing, and <laughs> I nearly drove. Like she reversed, right? And she was just like, going, nah, 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 and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought Karen had left, and because her car was black, she just blended into <laughs> the background. <laughs> so I just went, Zoop, and then I went, oh, you still there? So then, um, yeah, it's been like an eventful. Don't you pee? Yeah. So lads, we just picked a pea. Cheers. Uh, some more. Oh, they're oh, they taste like the garden. Mm. <laughs> That's a good thing. They taste refreshed. Yeah, lovely. We'll so they're the half pint peas. So I have like kind a few variety. Yeah. <laughs> We're Not gonna well. be chewing for a while. Hold on. <laughs> I like them. Mm. Now I don't know if they're. In, is that more? Sl Sorry, I just saw slugs not glistening on the dahlias. So oh, we are going to yeah. do. I've got questions. Garden questions. Karen has. Um, on my phone. Karen. <laughs> Karen did a question box on Instagram, and then we also kept an eye on comments on the last video then as well. Yeah. So I um, saved them on my phone. So that I need to go and find B or B. Well, I pause. It's here. It's here. Or do you have it? This my yeah. My eyes are weeping today as well, so I got sun cream in them. So if I keep playing with my eyes, I have Don't a little tissue. Um, yes, you. So, do, 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 do. Also, I don't even know any what the questions are. <laughs> she could ask me anything. Okay, I'm just gonna pick like random ones and we'll just chat away. So somebody said, if money was no object, what spendy thing would we get oh my for the God. garden? So, I said this question to Mr. Carrington at Chelsea the other day. So we do this as well. When we go somewhere, we pretend we're rich. <laughs> as in, we'll say things like, uh, like it's like, when you used to circle the Argos catalog as a kid, oh, and you would shop catalog. the Ar Argos catalog, <laughs> and you'd make up your dream houses. And so when I was at Chelsea the other day, and I saw there's obviously really expensive stuff there. And so I think if money was no object, first of all I would buy more land, because land is expensive, but not too much because at the end of the day, we know what road you would like to live on. Yeah, it's somewhere that we drive whenever we're out, kind of gallivanting, and we always make sure to drive on that road. It's yeah. Beautiful. So land and then outbuildings and then <laughs> bricks. So I think I would have maybe two or three acres, so which isn't too big, but manageable. One patch would be a wild flower section and like an orchard. Then you can tell I've thought about this. I was going to say, I haven't told <laughs> So I'm literally thinking, going, I'd be like, uh. Then I would have um, a walled area for my vegetables and cut flowers. That's a bit more of a working area. Then I would have an area that would have a big greenhouse, um, nice sheds as well, lots of storage. I feel like I squeeze everything into my shed. Then I would have the real, the formal garden, which would be planted. And so wild, then veggie, then formal-ish. When I say formal, not posh formal, but just like <laughs> not lines, your roses yeah. and like a really cottage. established kind of garden. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. And then I'd have a brick greenhouse 
mm. with the metal on top so like a Hartley or an Alatex one of them I would also have <laughs> <laughs> I see a shepherd's hut at Chelsea with that? the gold bathtub did you see it it was um a shepherd's hut don't fall let that fall Sorry, just as you were moving. Anything can happen today, sorry. Anything can happen. <laughs> it's not even a full moon, it's just... <laughs> it was. Uh, did you see the shepherd's hut? I think I have a picture. Um, a shepherd's hut. People have sorry. them as Airbnbs or whatever. I'd have it as a little outdoor office. It was the one that had the, oh, the copper bathtub, was in it? I can't remember because I feel like I've been looking at Chelsea online, but then also um, they're showing programmes twice a day. Oh, the I little, little outfit I got won an award. Oh. Ishuki. Oh my god, I can't remember saying that. That was the wins. bathtub in oh. the thing. <laughs> John and Peter can see, I'll insert a thing. So, this is like a shepherd's hood thing. So, whoever was there was like selling these. Mm. I didn't even ask how much because expensive. Another thing I would buy if I was rich, I seen this statue at Chelsea and it was, it was on my story. I don't know if you've seen it. It was a ho it was a metal little gate, and it was a horse leaning down. Oh, I saw and that. And there was a little, little girl, girl kissing the nose. That was and gorgeous. I'd buy that statue. Cause like I feel like that's our kind of sculpture. Cause like when we're going out doing like looks around like little gardens and stuff. I hate round balls. <laughs> and I don't like spiky Ooh. things like the shards. I hate um, like real modern looking rectangles. I don't want to cones. think about what the, like the, the subject could be. Yeah, I want to go. There's the horse with a girl. Like yeah. holding something up rather than, um, and I I feel like we like more stone texture things and more rustic, more earthy. Yeah, like stuff that's been there for a long time or that looks like it's been there for a long time rather than everything shiny. And like, if my book. rich garden, if so, if I was rich, my garden would still look normal. If that makes yeah. sense, even though I would have a big fancy greenhouse and a shepherd's hut and all the things. <laughs> But it wouldn't be greenhouse. pretentious, it would not be pretentious. It would no. still be a bit of rustic hair, a bit of weeds hair, a bit of... Apparently now on Gardener's World they were saying that like weeds are in. Weeds are fashionable. So lads, I'm after pulling out a load. Who knew that I had like, yeah. gotten rid of some of... Yeah, they're saying it's all like rewilding is what it's called. What would you spend your... Because I've gone off on a tangent on my rich. I had just said like one thing. I was like, just a greenhouse. But you know the way you have your one? Remember yeah. I sent you a picture last year of the <gasps> one? So... It has like an extension it's a deluxe essentially. version like, of mine. I had a side. Two sides, so it's like symmetrical. But when you walked in, yeah, two sides that you could kind of like have your planty bits on one side, but then also a table or a couch on the yeah. other. Because like here on the patio is where we spend a lot, most of the time as like a family, because we're all over here having barbecues and that. Like I would love to have, a have this area. patio with, you know, the Victorian cobblocks. Yeah. But like uh, uh, the chevron style, love that. And like have the wall. But I'd love to have, yeah, the greenhouse that you could sit inside mm. if it was kind of raining and that. Um, and yes, I would like to have more land because I, I don't know where I'd put the greenhouse if it was here. We joked, uh, whenever we were driving to Malahide or somewhere yeah. and we were saying if we were rich, we'd be neighbours. But we're also still antisocial. So we'd make sure that there was still enough room. Like we wouldn't be like semi-detached. We would be detached, but yeah. we'd be neighbours, but we'd still have... A lamp, yeah. So I could go into your garden, yeah. and you could come into mine. Could have like shared jars. <laughs> we could split the land. We could buy five and split two. Oh and God. <laughs> I'd like to have. I'd love to have a proper walled garden. Yeah. That, I don't know. Again, just having like the little rooms. But no, I think my main thing would be like a, a big greenhouse enough to fit everybody when they were over. Yeah. That's it, and then have more land, and then I'd love to have like an outdoor office that yeah. is a studio as well. Like you could get a shepherd's studio. Hall. I could. A bath. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a That's bath. not too much to ask. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Next question. Uh, my friend Mags actually said that, uh, sent this in. Weed or flower? How do I know? So this is not sponsored. I use an app called Picture This. You got me on that app. And I don't pay for like the um, premium. I don't actually know. So it says like try seven days free and then seven days free, then twenty nine ninety nine a year. But I just keep hitting cancel. There's and then a corner X button that you have to click. Yeah. Because I thought that that app was um, you either pay it or you can't use it at all. Same. And then I copped the X on the top right hand corner. Yeah. So you just hit cancel and then when you oh, sure when you click the camera down the bottom, I show you there. It's probably like us in the background. You can take a picture of and I do it all the time. I did it last mm. week when I was weeding the thing. The Apparently border. you can do Google image search. Oh, can you? Or there's something you can do with Google where you take a picture of it and search it. Mm. 
Google has some new search feature thing. Oh, what's that, that thing Joanna's, with the drama song yeah, with? Yeah, I haven't tried to use it, but um, that plant app picture this. So but good. But use the free version. Yeah, we don't pay. I, I did pay for one thing like the very first year when I hadn't a clue what was happening with the plants, but now I get a bit more used to it now. Mm. But yeah, picture this and it will kind of say, it could be this or it could be this. Mm. So I don't, uh, obviously it's gonna be hard for them to kind of distinguish based on like leaves and stuff like that. But, but I think leave, if you're not sure, leave it. And then, cause I find if you leave it a little bit, you get a, when you go to pull it out, mm. you get more root. Where oh. sometimes when you're picking out <laughs> the seedlings, I don't know, whereas when it gets a bit bigger, you can go. Yeah, that's what happened with that border over there. Oh my God. Like, Millions of things. You did a good job weeding that. But I just left it too long and then I was like, oh, I must do that. And I was like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> What's our favourite perennial and annual? That's like asking what's your favourite child or your favourite pet. There's too many. You can't answer that. I think annuals for me are sunflowers. That's an annual because annuals yeah, or, or annuals. Sunflowers or like I love cosmos because they're really easy to grow. Yeah, so, you know, they're kind of friendly and you get them like lots of different colours. So I didn't sow any Cosmo seeds. Some of them are in the greenhouse now. But usually I would, around this time of year, Someone's sprinkle them yeah. on the thing and see what happens. And I'll probably do that in some of the borders to kind of build up a bit of space. And then perennials. Oh, and this is what I love. I love catmint. Because I don't have to oh, do Oh, I know what my favourite perennial is. You know what I'm going to say. Hardy geranium. <laughs> any time I'd say to her, oh, what do you think? Hardy geranium. Oh, hardy geranium. <laughs> A hardy geranium. I think there's so many varieties and I have, yeah. I've got geranium Janet. I've got that common purple one. I've got the pink one that you have there. Sorry, my one there hasn't come out in flowers yet. You know the way you have, you know the really bright fuchsia pink one? Mine only started, that, um, with that purple one was not there when I left on Sunday for Chelsea. Oh, okay. So it only came up in the past two, three days when I was gone. The reason why I like a hardy geranium is you can divide them in autumn. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're good, they'll tolerate a little bit of drought once they get settled, they'll tolerate too much rain. They're just great. And if you cut them back around about like July time, mm -hmm. they'll go again. The second bloom, And yeah. they give you a lovely ground cover and even when they don't have flower, the foliage looks good and yeah. full. And fills the gap. It's a good gap filler. Good gap filler, because I find yeah. that's what I had kind of like learned from the patio area over the last couple of years is that I focus too much on just the flowers and so you want something yeah. that like does have the I've bit of foliage well. um so no yeah i have a couple of geraniums myself here actually do you know what that's what we said we were going to do now this year and um, come autumn is divide up stuff and um, divide swap and divide conquer. conquer i just save a few but i'm not buying many seeds <laughs> 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 how much do karen spend on seeds in spring you don't have to say the oh because I, I don't know <laughs> Do you know what though as well? I've been watching a few garden people online and everyone is saying the same thing, that things were so slow to germinate, yeah. so slow to grow. And I thought it was just me as a bad seed sower. No, it's been a tough spring. It's been because colder, damp, damper, it wetter. Was, uh, February was warmer than March and April. Mm -hmm. There was so much, we had really uh, dry, then we had torrential rain and then it was colder. Like we, a couple of people saying about black spot on roses. You're not alone. The main, all my neighbors have the black spot on roses. I was at Chelsea yeah. and I was like, I know you can't compare your plants to Chelsea, but <laughs> on I was a scale like, of one to Chelsea. <laughs> I was in the um, the David Austin rose tent with Mr. Garrington and I was like, there's not a green fly or a black spot in sight because obviously they're grown in yeah. perfect conditions, not normal gardens, but if you're in the same boat. But I've found, once I've cut off the black spot, it's all, it's at the base mm. mostly. The new growth doesn't have it. I need to do, and I feel like all the black spot leaves on that rose has come off. Oh, wait, yeah, they tend got, to. Oh, you're flying your head, it's gone. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's been black spot, but I think I have like a few aphids on roses there, so I'm just gonna hose Ooh, that down. I have a question Ooh. that I asked just as you said aphids. So um, I feel like this video is like, take a shot every time she says, when I was at Chelsea. <laughs> oh, Bozzy spilled me tea. <laughs> Here, you like, it's literally, it's soaping up in my head. <laughs> um, also, Boz, do that on the side. No, the other side. You have like a little moustache, coffee moustache. Do it, lick your, I'm not licking your face. <laughs> well, I'll finish it and then lick it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Oh, man, I'm getting a headache with the... <laughs> That's why 
what she said. <laughs> I'm <Dirty>. crying. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when you're at Chelsea, black spot roses. Aphids. Aphids. I asked the man, there was a, a planted voice stamp, and I said to you, and I want to ask him about aphids and green fly and pests because I had seen some comments, and you have slugs, and I asked him about slugs and snails and everything to do with that. So he said, with aphids and green fly and any of the other things, they love the new growth on your plant because your new foliage hasn't grown this waxy seal oh. and um, that's why you see them on the tips and on the new growth so he was actually saying don't spray anything we need to stop and getting out of the habit of spraying now obviously if you are a big commercial farming thing it's your livelihood i don't know yeah. what that advice is this is just for us home gardeners and um, so he was saying if you can tolerate them and not be so quick to remove them. You will attract the um, ladybugs and the birds because I noticed the little um, the blue tits and the finchy birds. Mm -hmm. um, I spotted them going. They fly in and they do pick off some of them. But the problem is, it's not to be 100% eradicated of bugs. It's to actually have some. I suppose managed to have that ecosystem and often. have the balance. Now he did say this was a tip. The black aphids he was saying that sometimes he will wipe them off and squish them so he'll wipe them off with like a tissue apparently wiping them and squishing them releases a pheromone that will attract ladybugs because oh. they can smell ooh dead aphids, aphids i'm gonna go get you <laughs> <laughs> every time i see a ladybug now i'm gonna be like ooh, I'm hello. Get you. and um slugs he said that slugs obviously have a bad rep but of all the slugs that are in your garden, there's only I have them all. <laughs> there's only about two or three varieties that actually eat your plants. Not every slug eats your plant. I don't know how to identify which ones you do or don't. You probably I do. Would care to differ like yeah, like to differ with one. He said if you leave them long enough, the birds obviously eat them, obviously the hedgehogs if you are lucky enough to have them, and then snails, I said oh he said about a compost if you have snails so i said i throw them over the wall which you saw me do today <laughs> karen goes oh there's a little slug in your alley up and i was like where <laughs> i must i must stress that it's wild land over the wall i'm not thrown into my neighbor <laughs> could you imagine getting clonked on the head by a snail because <laughs> kids walk along that road to school because it's a public walkway <laughs> and some mornings I'd be out do you know when you do your yeah. car <laughs> just be fire no friends <laughs> <Where's laughs> walking to school <laughs> can't go to school I've been injured by flying snail so he said that he okay, removes you. relocation with snails and he puts them um <laughs> in his compost Sounds so funny heap. sorry just got to relocate you now. Relocate so live here now he was saying he puts them in his compost heap and that helps because they like it in the compost heap. I don't know who I was watching or where. I feel like I've been consuming so much garden content recently. And somebody was saying uh, recently that if you have bird feeders in your garden to help attract the birds close to where the aphids might be or yes. the black fly, and that will help like encourage them. Now, I have seagulls the size of human children. You're near to see. Close to see, and usually like the, they're on the, that back wall there anyway. But um. So I, I don't know if they scare off some of the birds. Maybe I just need to get more bird feeders and stuff because I think we've been lucky now when it comes to aphids so far. Sorry, that's so loud. I hope you can hear us. <laughs> <laughs> Will I pull the camera a bit closer to us in case? Here, come closer. Come closer, our friends. Cool. Just for the mic. Yeah, we're still both in shot. And yeah. hopefully the mic just picks us up and not that lawnmower next door. It's power wash. Oh, I'll st I was a power washer. Yeah. Um, okay, somebody asked, what's the easiest flower or vegetable to grow and start with? I know. Vegetable peas. Oh yeah, peas. Peas are so easy. Potatoes. Potatoes as well. You just throw them in a bucket. Now it's probably too late for potatoes now to sow. Or, no, could you do main crop now? You could do main crop, but you can get the blight. The blight resistant same, ones. St. Patrick's <coughs> Day, do your first daily. So pencil that in for next year. The only thing... Yeah. We, maybe potatoes is a bit harder than peas only because of the weight of the compost in the bag yeah so we both grow them in bags i have like two big bags of them and we did that last year as well yeah. got a great out harvest 
And with peas as well, I like them the fact that like you can grow them in like see this, I just have this one to hand. Oh, you is that oh it's, that was broken. Like a pot like this, you can grow you a pea in it. Like you don't have to have any fancy garden veg bed or anything like yeah. that. I've done peas a lot of stuff oh, in pots. Strawberries for veg. Yeah. Strawberries are well if you're in Ireland, they do well. Um, strawberries are great to grow for a, uh, I was going to say a veg, a fruit. Or a fruit. Yeah, sorry, fruit. Yeah, you meant food, yeah. I meant, yeah. But I think with the first year strawberries, you don't get as much fruit as the more established ones. Yeah. And actually, we'll show this year, whenever the strawberries finish, how to like get more get fruit runners. plants. Yeah, because we, we did that. Um, yeah, I have a load of runners actually from last year that I put yeah. on. And like as well, like the, pe the kids love peas. You get like a lot and they grow really quickly, they germinate really quickly, yeah. which I really like. And there's like different varieties of which I have them all like. Oh, and like lettuce and um, yeah, salad. Yes. Um, salads are so easy to grow, um, what, three weeks? Four three weeks. weeks. And I've learned as well that like not to have them, like I wouldn't put salads in that the corner where I have the veg because that gets so much sun and they can bolt they really bolt, quickly. Yeah. So if you have them like in a little bit of a shady area. Um, yeah. And, like, and bolting oh, just means that they, they shoot up and they flower and they create a seed. Cause they're and like, they get real bitter then. Yeah. Um, sorry, courgettes are... Courgettes. Are, <laughs> courgettes are really easy to grow. <laughs> Come to my house, I said. I'm going to throw slugs over that one. I'm getting at things. Um, but no, courgette, I think it's important though as well. Like, yeah, you could have those things that are really easy to grow. He's hosing his... Uh, umbrella stick um, <laughs> but there's no point growing stuff just because it's easy to grow if you're not going to eat them like uh, beetroot are supposed to be easy to grow I don't I grew beetroot one year and I I, <laughs> I realised I only like pickles <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't grow <laughs> I was going to say that myself no if it's not I in like the pickles, jar but no, I know you can pickle it yourself but I really see I'm not going to pickle it I'm not do you know what I did last year we grew pickles like the pick, like the actual chickens yeah, the actual pickles. fruit. Yeah, pickles. <laughs> and I had excess, I had bought pickles and I, I kept the juice from them. But oh. then I put the pickles that I cut into it. They weren't oh. that nice though. They were like a little bit like Do, To pickle spongy. something you put it in vinegar, do you get something? There's, yeah, some kind of brine. A pickling. Like big, uh, pick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, the coffee's kicked in. I'm just <laughs> I've had three. I'm going to be like this. Mm. Um, in terms of flowers, Cosmos, Easy. Some flowers, easy. What? No, where did you go from? I thought we were talking about vegetables. She said it flowers slash vegetables. Oh. I'm sorry, I thought you were, do you want more veg? No, I just was seeing sorry. how we ended up there. <laughs> no. So, yeah. Oh, easy to grow flowers. Flowers, yeah. Anything, when it comes to flowers, they're all easy. Like as in, if you've good soil and you're, you've good drainage, you can grow kind of anything. It's where you have trouble is if you're growing in like, Shishy soil. <laughs> Don't grow in shishy, shishy soil. Shishy soil. If you've good soil and you mulch it and there's drainage in it, I think what happens is if you're growing in pots and you don't drill holes and they become waterlogged yeah. and you don't maybe mix in some perlite and things like that, or if you don't feed them, that's when you could plant anything, but it's not going to do well. The conditions have to be good, basically, yeah. what I'm trying to say. If you good conditions, you can grow anything. And then as well, I suppose, if you know the area. So for me now, because I don't know a huge amount about plants, and like, I know, you know, the, the labels will say like, oh, sunny, half shade, whatever, whatever. So I like kind of putting things out where I think that they're going to do well and leaving them in the pots for like a bit so I can kind of assess the situation and then plant them. Mm -hmm. um, but like for sowing seeds, like you had great success with zinnias. I, yeah, great. I got massacred by slugs. I think because I left them on the windowsill <coughs> and then I put them in the greenhouse yeah. and then they were a good bit tall. They're still sitting out the back in the seed tray, but I put them outside to harden them off and um, I'll put them in the bed now. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I think in terms of, yeah, Cosmos, you can't go wrong. I'm going to give you poppy really seeds easy. today as well. Oh, yeah. They um, we got them in a press drop. I love when press drops are garden related yeah. <laughs> for us. Because um, they give you stuff that's like you seeds can use. and things. Yeah. And it's not just like now, you're not going to be able to just use it now. You're going to be able to like, so, yeah. I thought that was thing. You so can use it in the math. future. Um, but. Because both myself and Karen got olive trees like five, six years ago. Yeah, I bet that's a, From Loxitan as a press drop and I just thought what a lovely thoughtful thing like to gift a tree 
and we have them in our pots and both of them like oh. it's just done so well just so good and like we still get to message each other going listen it's all <laughs> just a minor looking a little bit scaldy what does yours <laughs> look like how's olive looking <laughs> oh my god okay let's next see. question what is next um what plant you've tried to glow, grow sorry what plant have you tried to grow multiple times but no luck dem ranunculus and I tried last year and every one of them just fell. Maybe I, I didn't pre-moisten them. Someone said if you soak the corns, corns, corns in water and it helps them. One actually came back this year, but the foliage and all looks scabby. Mm. I don't think they liked them. Um, so ranunculus and I didn't like the begonias. I said that in the last video though. <laughs> and I actually strongly disliked the begonias. I actually saw some when I was in the Malhide Garden Centre the other day and I was going to send you a picture going, there's your pals. <laughs> you love them. Scaldy. <laughs> Um, I can't grow lavender. I can't, as in, I can't sow the lavender seeds. I can keep lavender plants alive that are existing. I've tried to sow the seeds twice now. And I'm like, that's enough. Done. So, oh, yeah. sorry, we need to do cuttings. Cuttings. Um, I'm going to do that with lavender because every cutting that I did last year, maybe Apparently, I did the wrong time. Uh, cuttings are better than seeds. Did you see that on Gardener's World? Monty John had seed delphinium and cutting Cutting. delphinium and the cuttings were proper plants at that stage i'm going to see because i think i have delphiniums but it's probably too late now he did his a few weeks ago but there's a girl a girl a woman that i follow on instagram and tiktok anya anya the garden fairy anya the garden fairy i follow her too she's great her videos are really good so so i think she propagated salvia there recently and so I just I want to try and do I just want more plants and not have to buy loads of seeds so with the lavender I've decided no more seeds I'm not going to try and grow that now I'll try and do more puddings did them last not the, kind of the end of the summer not one took but I don't think I did it properly so yeah. I'm going to watch her things she did um oh no there's another fellow the Mediterranean gardener and he showed how to do puddings of I'm pointing because it's there hydrangea Oh. And he had Hydrangea Annabelle. And ah, my do friend. There's another your best one. Path, yeah. It's actually growing this year. But Is she in a better spot? Did you move her? I moved one. The one I moved looks a bit scaldy, <coughs> but apparently they don't like being moved and it takes them another two or three years to be happy where they've been moved. Yeah. The one that I didn't move is growing well, but we'll see how... Cause we, I was just saying to Karen this morning, there's no, there hasn't been any rain for the past couple of days mm. and there's no rain forecast. So we're gonna to have to get out and start watering. Yeah. Um because things were looking like a little bit like were my getting a bit, potatoes ooh. were a little bit like meh, miserable. Yeah, so I know it hasn't been hot, but if are you gonna get a no water boot? What boot? <laughs> yeah, I th- and I think I'm gonna maybe try and keep it in the front when I do some I wanna do some raised beds and a bit of work in the front. So I think what I might do is I want to move my bins to the front, but hide them. Yeah. And I might put a butt at the end. Like but it would be a fourth wheelie bin, but it'd be a water butt. Yeah, I could have like yeah. a little uh, yoke bob. And then I can get a smaller butt for behind the greenhouse. Mm. So then I have a butt in the back and a butt in the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, what's that? And she'd These be like, butts. that's my front butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I know, I feel like I do off. need butts. And I also want to get... Um, Poster. Big butts in the that left. <laughs> Elephants kept in there. Has the coffee kicked in? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what can put in this coffee. It's just normal coffee. Ten <laughs> shots of espresso. Um, okay. Oh, the fav- favorite bits of each other's garden. What would you steal? <laughs> Lovely girly bits is <laughs> your cottage garden area. I love it, and I think my favourite bits. I love your greenhouse, like, and that's. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is when your ma sat you down yeah. after you were having an argument with your brother, and you were like, "No, you apologise and say something <laughs> nice to him." <laughs> like, I like, I like, <laughs> um, and I think that your, your thing is very nice. No, in fairness, I love like the pond area and that's what, and your magnolia as well. Like that's lovely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, I've got next. Any juicy questions? No. Juicy. It's all just been like. I have to make sure you're still recording, because <clears throat> we're at 20 minutes. Right, I'm just gonna do a pause and go. Yeah. Okay, action. 
It's someone says, uh, where? What's your dream garden? It can be anywhere and can already exist. Um. Oh, this is big money to maintain. Powers Court Gardens. No, hang on. Pause. What? <laughs> <laughs> My brain. <laughs> what? So okay, there's there's two. Give me that cut. I swear to God, you're going to knock that all over yourself. <laughs> Again. Powers Court Estate and Gardens. But my only thing is... Sorry, I've never been there. Don't be oh, We have to go. Okay. It's beautiful. It's stunning. I would love to own the land. I'd say it's so valuable. It wouldn't... You couldn't put a price on mm. it. But my brain is like... I couldn't maintain that. My other one is Farm Lee Gardens. I've never been... No, I haven't been there now. No, I've never been there. And then oh God, like and then also <laughs> if I was like one that I'd say would be more manageable is the walled garden that I visited in like two or three videos ago on a Sunday one. The one that we went to and the gate was closed. Oh yeah yeah yeah. In there it's a wall garden. So I think if I was your a millions <laughs> which I don't even think you'd still be able to afford, to afford that. Powers Court Gardens. But I suppose if I was that rich I'd have staff to there'd be a head gardener. Would it be bad to have staff? And I'd be like, listen, no, I don't want that there. Or, do you know, I feel like I'd be hanging over it. I have a question for you. Okay. Would you ever like to do a show garden? Yes. But, okay, there's a lot to go into this. Yeah. And I feel like I can show garden. <gasps> oh. oh, it's my hair. Ooh. I feel my hair. The end of my hair. That's coffee. It's, it's hard. It's sticky. <laughs> Oh, it's coffee. I can smell it. Oh, and I only washed it this morning. Hold on. I don't want people thinking that's weird. Um, <laughs> sorry. 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 What was your question? Oh, Would show you like garden. Show garden. So, in watching Gardeners World, and like they do, they did it with um, somebody this year, a chap this year. They did it with people last year as well. And there's a lot that goes they into it. They show the following and the making oh, of a show garden. Like and everything has to be, like you, they'll have flowers that have to be in perfect bloom way before they're supposed to be your way after and I just think the timing but I would love to do, do you know what I'd, I'd love to actually do like a garden design course like even if it's just like an online thing just to learn like the basics about mm. you know placement and but then like I know what I like as well but I, I would love to know like the the theory behind it Cause you know when you watch like love your garden and that and they kind of know how to plan things out yeah and, they know the, the areas and the hearts and where to put things too I'd love to just yeah, have a show garden, but then also my nerves will be shot to shit trying to get it all done. But I think it would be like cottagey slash yeah. like rustic. I'd love to have like loads of sculptures. Something I've noticed about sh the show gardens is they all seem to have the feature, <laughs> which could be so. For example, there was a garden today and it had temples. Oh. So you have like your 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 thing so whether it's like a little cottagey feature or one year at bloom there was this mm. tin metal shepherd hut thing so that's kind of like your focal thing and then there's the pathways and then you have the trees then you have the shrubs and then you have the perennials mm. and the thing but again that's like us just being like oh that looks easy to do and then you go and do it and it's like hmm <laughs> like someone left a comment in on my last video going i love the way you just go i bought this because i liked it and that's what yeah. i do rather than thinking well i do try and like think okay that'll be nice in this general area but you remember last year when we went to that um garden festival thing down in, oh, in Carlo. Carlo, and Fro adam frost was saying about how he designs gardens and he was saying that he, like, he does it in layers and stuff like that i yeah. feel like i would benefit from that a yeah. bit but, like, I'd love, you know your one, Josie... London? Josie London. She lives in the Cotswolds, and her garden yeah. is beautiful. And I'd love kind of something like that in terms of, like, doing a show garden that you'd have, you know, your the border. I don't know what my theme would be or what my... I have to think about this. What would you, what would you do in your show, Gordon? <laughs> <laughs> that better be your thumbnail. Oh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh. I think I would die of the pressure of having to do a show garden because I've been following the, the Bloom page and they're sharing all of the designers and landscapers yeah. making the gardens and it's a 
full on. I'd love to know how much a show garden costs to put together. And then what they do with them after. I know some A lot of them get donated. Them. So I asked that question at Chelsea, <laughs> take a shot again. Oop, she said it again. <laughs> um, it's one guy and he said that the garden was getting divided. Some of it, this was the one that had the temples with the 14 grand outdoor wallpaper. <gasps> yes. Half was it like waterproof? Like it was, yeah, I was like stenciling. Stenciling. And um, it, some of it was going like to the RNLI or something, and then the plants were getting sent to like old folks' homes mm. and charities and schools and stuff. Yeah. But again, you need to have a big bread sponsor. So, does someone sponsor the show garden? And then yeah, they pay for the it. Yeah. Because someone has to foot the bill for that. Because I'd say there was one show garden at Chelsea, and I was like, that's easily quarter of a million. Easily. First of all, it had 14 grand wall, outdoor wallpaper yeah. on it. Before the thing was built, there was trees. And we play guess the price I was just in the garden say, Can we play guess the, the cost of the show garden? Yeah. Because I loved the show garden in Chelsea. I can't remember what it was called, but it was the one that had the outdoor kitchen. And it was Is that the Mediterranean like, one? Yeah, and it was yeah. they had like he had veg beds, but they had like they're on an angle. But mm. then he had stone pathways, which you were talking about like earlier, kind of like gravelly pathways. But then he had like little pockets of herbs that were on corners or like things that were, it wasn't perfect. It was mm. it looked lived in. It looked rustic. Oh, that's the one I was at with the stone edge. Was that the stone edge? Yeah, that's the one I was on about. Not the, uh, the one across from that was the Mediterranean one. Um, I know oh, the one you're on about. I know what one you're on about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Monty Don loved the Mediterranean one. He was like, that's the one that I want to come back to every day to, to see it. Yeah, now, it was really lovely. They had um, very your her herringbone brick floor. Yes. And then they had done a section and they um, had all them bricks wonky. So I it was perfect. And then it went <clears throat> off like Wizard of Oz wonky. Mm. But it looked lovely. I like that. See, I love things that aren't, that look like they've been there for ages, but like the thought mm. that would have had to have gone into that. Do you yeah, know? And someone had to think. There's a lot of pressure because there was one chap, actually, the chap that did that one that I was saying about that had like the outdoor garden and it, it fed some of the Chelsea pensioners. I was like, I feel like we could be Chelsea pensioners. <laughs> we would totally be Chelsea. We are Chelsea pensioners. But he was planning that like for three years. Yeah. And here's us and like I suppose as well, like people one of the questions um there is like where to start and like I suppose the place to start is just start just start with something and then it will I think constantly evolve, do you know? Reading books and actually seeking the knowledge if you're interested will see you on the right way. But if you are really like I actually don't know where to start, it probably would be worth doing a consultation with the garden designer if you have the budget now we never did that we just went in and because yeah. we're passionate and we actually have the interest and we want to learn but i know not everyone has the time to they want it done we they want the process it done of we it. actually like the process yeah. of layering onto a garden and every year it changes so i think if you're really overwhelmed actually i've worked with board be they are not sponsoring <laughs> but they have free garden plans but mm. the one thing I'll say is when you see the Latin, because I, I took one of the plants when I was working for them and I had to take plants from the planting list and I had to put them in a border and make a thing. And I messaged you and I was like, Karen, it's in Latin. <laughs> it's in the I plant was like, Latin. No can help. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. <laughs> but actually it wasn't too, because first looking at you like, oh my God, I'm really overwhelmed because it's the Latin name of the plants or whatever. But I actually just broke it down and I was like, okay, Put it into Google, saw, oh, actually, that's just a geranium, but yeah. it was geranium, blah, 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 yeah. And I went into the... Uh... <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I could just imagine that in the loop. Blah, 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 blah. Imagine me presenting. I hope that then people don't ask me to go on the telly. I did a screen test and I said it in a couple of videos ago. Um, I'm hoping they don't call back. <laughs> because could do. you imagine me on live television going, yeah, this is a geranium, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> You'd be like, it's a pink one and it's lovely. It's a pink geranium. <laughs> Stick it in or, or don't. Um. <laughs> Pure filth. Pure filth. Now you're going to see the real Adele. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> Are you possessed? <laughs> Show a coffee. Like, you're not having any more coffee. You're going to be like driving home going. Uh, beyond that M50 going. <laughs> um. What were we saying? We were talking about like where to start. Do you know what? Pencil and uh, paper, sketch out and sit with that and then stick in what plants you would like and hide in Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see what that was. I can feel it's the, the pressure. 
breath from. I know I can feel the air from his wings. Oh yeah, that looks like Frank. Um, he's the name. Yeah, there's like a pigeon called Frank, and he comes like to take a drink every How do you know time. His name is Frank? Just, so I've anointed him as <laughs> you are Frank. Because I feel like last year I got like the iPad out and I was like, oh yeah. my god, I'm gonna design everything, and then I was like, no. But for me, I think if you, I suppose if you have the interest in like figuring out what plants you like, first of all, yeah, make a list of what you like, even if it's a, a Pinterest board. So you're like, oh, I'd love to have lavender in my garden, and kind of mm. just add the like make a list of the plants that you like the look of. And then you have to kind of figure out then where the sun is, you know, and what I have learned over the last few years is because I just have to just like plant everything everywhere. No, it's Frank's chasing Frank. Frankie. <laughs> uh, what's the girl's name? Pidgey Witch. Because um, like not everything is going to work in your garden that mm. you might want. Um, but then there are ways around it as well. Because like mm. I, there's like oh, loads of plants that I would look like at the moment. I'm having a time, not really a time, with my original on. That has my heart broke. I have three little of it and it still looks the exact same as when I planted it. Now, it's only been in there a few weeks, but what I'm thinking There's about... mine has started to flower, yeah. so it just shows that you can have two gardens in the same county, mm. but different, and the same, you can have a garden next door and they can have loads of original yeah. on, and it might just be the wind is hitting it at a certain angle or it's getting too much or too little sun all from mm -hmm. the... So it's important to watch where things hit and come in in your garden. Yeah. So I think I'm going to take them out. <laughs> Sorry, lads. Bye. But put them into a barrel, you know, the barrel that we got. Yeah. Um, and from the salvage yard. From the salvage yard and see how it goes. And I think there's so much pressure on people to get, when it comes to gardening, feel like you have to get it right. Because like you might and see also, all the info. Gardening is not an instant gratification. Well, it is when you cut the grass and it feels lovely and it's yeah. tidy for that moment. Mm -hmm. But it's not like getting your kitchen renovated. It's not because like Unless what? if you get a professional in to do, but even then, your plants yeah. are probably going to be, depending on your budget, it'll Adam be smaller. Adam Frost said, remember at that thing in Carlo, he was like, yes. when I hand someone a garden that I've just designed and planted, I'm handing them an infant. Because that, like, over the years, it will take five years to mature, mm -hmm. like maybe ten years, and then trees. So a garden is something that you can go out and you can get your landscaper and you can do the hardscaping and you can plant some stuff. But actually, it's how it goes year on year. Because yeah. if you look at air garden videos, my garden was a square patch of grass. Yeah. But and I could have like just spent here's twenty. Well, I didn't. But I don't have twenty grand to spend. <laughs> but to a hardscaper and be like, put down the stone, put a greenhouse there. But actually, I did all those little things year on year as I had the budget and as I yeah got. The, we can the see how. I suppose how you use your garden then as well, do you know? Like, and exactly how you use your garden. Because like, you yeah. could have somebody going, oh yeah, and this will look great. But then on paper, you'd be like, or like in reality, you're like, no, but that's not where I want to sit. Because like, mm. I know that this is where we put the patio because it gets the sun for the most of the day. And it's especially in the evening spot. as well. Yeah, the bar we have to build another barbecue. But I think lifestyle as well. So if you're working yeah. 50 hours a week, you're not going to want to be in your garden for another 20. Mm -hmm. So I think... Your lifestyle, if you have kids, if you have pets, there's lots of, I think watch Garden Rescue, is it? Garden Rescue, and the other one is, well, love your garden, but that has more kind of like stories to it. But even like Laura from Garden Answer is great yeah. one to watch. Niall's Garden is great. Hughes, Hughes Garden? Hughes. 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 <laughs> oh, that was you. <laughs> oh, <that's that. laughs> it's my little fountain. See, <laughs> <laughs> I think the water is gone. I did something. <laughs> did <laughs> the you, noise of that was there to me. Why did you think my <laughs> coffee was there to me? I just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. All I've done is weep. I am sweating there with the laughter. Um, but no, I think when it comes, don't get overwhelmed. Even if it's like corner by corner, section by section. Because when I think about like at the patio back on the first, like 2020, I had maybe like four or five pots. And then yeah. it's grown and grown and grown, literally. And then. And don't compare yeah. yourself to Rochelle Garden because I now I remember years and years and years and years ago going to Bloom and I was like, why does my garden look shit? And I now realise the work and everything and how nurseries plant things and they're able to have things flowering before. <laughs> like when you go to even like, you know, Woody's or B&Q and you go to the garden section, they have plants that are in flower that I have in my garden that are not. Mm -hmm. And it's because, well, they've been grown in a, a nursery and things like that. So don't compare yourself to like take inspiration take inspiration and actually something this will tie in with something that we were going to talk about anyway is like 
chat to the people in garden centres yeah. because they're all trained, they're all professional yeah. horticulturals. They can, you can even show them like a picture of your garden and get inspo. And I, yeah, so something that we were going to talk about and ask you guys as well is mm. if we had the opportunity to go to a garden ask centre a horticulturist. and ask a horticulturist, would you like to see that in this type of a video or do you mm. think should we do it in like a separate video? Yeah. Because like for I know for like a lot of you like it's like you when just you sit with us you just have, have the chats, have the chats and whereas listen to us. we I feel if we ask the horticulturist we have to be on our best behavior yeah there'd be no coffee no laughing well well a bit laughing but <laughs> that person might just be like oh my god what have I got myself in who here? are these but what Egypt. we could possibly do is having a chit chat and then maybe 10 minutes at the end ask the horticulturist yeah. and we ask serious come questions questions and questions that like you guys might have the answer or might have the answers to questions that you might want like the answers concerns. to like I like, remember last have, year yeah. I had a wonky lupin it went <laughs> that sounds so weird <laughs> I had a wonky lupin and no one could happens. no one could tell me why what was wonky about him his I tip he's a he. <laughs> <laughs> do you know the floral tip yeah I'm it went, looking at mine now to see if mine so it went oh and then after a few weeks it went <laughs> Oh no. Listen, it happens to everybody. <laughs> There's no shame in that. And it was a curl it in. Oh. And I had to support it. And what was wrong with him? You never found out? Aww. He just went to seed then when I left him. I was like, oh, I'll keep an eye on that next Aww. year. Oh, Lupin. I love Lupins. So I went, do do do. Not with that noise. <laughs> But yeah, let us know if that's something that you'd want to see in a separate video or at the end of like one of these videos. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, like, we wouldn't be able to have like be absolutely bold children. Yeah. Amongst professionals. Do you have any more questions? Let's have a little squiz. Do, do, any do, 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 juicy? No juicy questions. No juicy questions. I suppose there's not much juicy. Yeah. You can't ask about the garden, is um, there? Someone, Lindsay said, um, what has been the most exciting thing we've done to the gardens? That every day is an excitement, but that because that's it. Like starting up the like morning. Of this little area here is my favorite, and yeah. like in the evenings now, in the afternoon, sitting on the swing and kind of looking down. I really like that. But then I also love the veg beds. But I also love like the archways and what they're gonna have. Like look, they're all rusty now. I think the most exciting thing is just seeing like things grow, and you kind of think the garden is you'll get bored of it but you don't because you get the excitement of seeing things coming back and the most exciting thing is when you see like new shoots and new growth yeah and, and you're like, like oh my god it's yeah. happening um or i'll like be there like filming something for my channel and i'll see like a little thing that i didn't know mm. was there or like when i saw the foxgloves coming back i was like oh. so for me it's those little moments of joy yeah it's, it's those little, little moments things. it's not the one thing that you fixate on it's the my thing is the excitement of I have watched the birds and the wildlife and the insects increase year on year mm -hmm. because I've keep adding more like you know little trees and plants and shrubs and I've way more wildlife <coughs> and even like the little pond area and stuff and having water um because Nicola my book editor when she sits in the garden she's like oh my god you have so much insects in your garden I feel like my garden doesn't have any insects mm. and like little things like that I, yeah. I feel like I am like mother nature is like working through me or something <laughs> I'm getting spiritual now but yeah Go it's like because I think there's the satisfaction back. of seeing kind of before and after or like at the end of a mm. season or something but then yeah it's those exciting things or those little unexpected things or like oh something they, I did grew, that something came back or mm. oh I'm after growing that sweet corn or oh look we got our apples you know um, there's almost like a a moment of pride. We had this, we were saying over the past couple mm. weeks, when you walk into your garden and you're maybe just cutting the grass, you're doing something, and then you walk in and you get a moment of, oh, I did this. <laughs> it's yeah, just like, like a pride It's feeling. still happening, because like, I don't think, because um, I think that was one of the questions, maybe I didn't mark it down, because somebody had said, like, will you ever be finished in no, your garden? No, you don't finish a garden. You don't finish a garden. Like, I can't imagine. I think we just, I don't think we're meant, bored if we... I'm just going to say, like, coming out and just sitting. And then what? Like, I think it's nice to take that time and like enjoy it and look around and everything. But then I'm like, even here I'm going, oh, I need to plant that bit out. Or I need to do this. Or I need to do that. I love the, as mm -hmm. I said before, I love the doing. I love the process. I love that before and That's after. That's where the free therapy comes. 
that when you're out there. Yeah, that's what I said last week. <laughs> Did anybody like, see the boy on Gardeners World? The little lovely, wasn't he just the best? Logan. I hope they have him. Is that his name? I lo- yeah, Logan. Oh my God, he was just gorgeous. And he was talking about how in lockdown he developed kind of anxiety. How old was he? About seven, eight? About seven or eight. And he was like, now I don't have like anxiety, but I have elephant garlic. And it was yeah. just so wholesome and so lovely that... Um, we need more of that. Like Even if you only have a balcony, look at, like you can grow tomatoes and flowers and everything in pots and like just having that little thing oh I'm good good and pick a tomato those mm. little things are just give me joy yeah do you know and I wonder does that happen with other people probably not <laughs> I'm just like oh my god it's like sad but free yeah. therapy it is free therapy and then also we need therapy after like things like this because we are t- we actually t- probably need to go for paid therapy but we keep doing <laughs> free garden therapy thing in the hopes that it's going to like fix us but really we probably need but you know what <laughs> like a while back i don't even remember why and i was it was on a monday and i was like I need to go to a garden centre. Yeah, like, yeah. I need to, to do that. We, as I was we had this conversation <laughs> in the car on the way back from the Arboretum. And we were saying something along the lines of, like, we were busy or whatever, things to do work-wise. And I was like, I just want to go to the garden centre. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we, like, it's like our little place to go. And we're like, just even yeah. look and see what's out, what's new. You don't have to be buying anything. <laughs> Says she. Two of us bought a bird bath leave and bird bath. And like the bird bath so I'm after buying like a little small one. I showed that in like a previous video. And yet they'll still go for that little saucer. Yeah, the little But I think yeah, I'm gonna put that over there. See even that, like I'm like, where am I gonna put that? There's just so much change. You can move things around as much as I you want. I think if you are someone who wants to finish your garden, you will finish it yeah. and just maintain it. We're not them people, yeah. I think, because I feel like the finished gardens are either ones that are 20 years in the making. Like, do you know? See the show gardens. They're obviously finished gardens. They're lovely. But they're not because they're lovely for a month. Mm-hmm. But then you have to be like, okay, summer plants are going to come up. Autumn plants are going to go up. Leaves will fall in autumn. Bulbs will need to be planted. Seeds will need to be sown. So even the, those show gardens are like constant. I can't wait to go bulb shopping. I know it's only May. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do what, what bulbs are, so I'm going to do more crocus in the grass do and remind me of that when I come over the next time because mm. <laughs> I nearly trampled oh, them oh she's nearly stunning me crocus I didn't know they were there they were only like little, <laughs> there weren't any flowers I'm going to buy lots more alliums because I have three over mm. there that I didn't know were in those pots um, they must have been from last bees year bees love them I don't love I don't think and they look more. lovely dead they do that bit of structure I think I'd put them in along here because I don't want to put many bulbs spring bulbs in my border just because yeah i i just think for me it would just look too messy while you're waiting for the foliage to die back at least you can hide the pots yeah it hot hot pots so last year i mixed some tulips in with daffodils and then when one went there was never like a full display so i want to have like one pot of like what that sounds like, like your stomach i know it's not but <laughs> it's her okay <laughs> <laughs> wait listen that Hold sounds, on. Wait, let me just move. That sounds like... <laughs> it's, I think it's because it's in the shadow. Oh, wait, oh, oh it's Am it's I blocking squirting. it? Wait, so... it's squirting. Look, watch. It's because it's, it's in the shade. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The wheels could come off at any time. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Um, okay, we've got... I say, yeah. let's, we'll do five more minutes. Yeah. No more questions on the thing? There's no more, not really. They're all kind of the similar kind of tone, don't, don't they? Sorry, I don't mean to say that. Yeah, just like, I don't know. Well, best outdoor paint. Would we paint terracotta or plastic? Fave, non, comedogenic, don't know what that is. It means it doesn't break you out. Propagating dahlias. I don't know if I... I can answer the paint one. Yeah, you answer the paint, I'll do the sunscreen one. <laughs> um, so if you're painting... Because I have lots of plastic pots here. I, you can paint plastic pots, but the only thing is you have to use like a paint that, like it, it can peel over time mm. and eventually like it will. Um, so the B&Q paint, the good home one I used on my chairs, there's also a difference between, you have like stain and then you have paint. So when you go to the section, let's say in the DIY shop, you'll have garden paints and then you can have garden stains. The stains mm-hmm. are watery and they're generally the ones that you use on your fences. Um, 
and they're grand so like there's the Kipranol, there's Ron Seal, then you have the own brands, you've got like the B&Q own brand and um, that's actually quite good like mm. but the thing about painting outside is to do expect a little bit of deterioration because it's going to be outside yeah like you can cover your chairs over winter did you um, paint your plastic you know your the... i painted that little tyke's house with that oh, that was plastic yeah, yeah. so i used authentico's um Alf, i think they have an outdoor paint and there was a built-in primer and i used it on that and that was good um, and that took ages there was mm. no kind of deterioration on that um color trend do an outdoor paint as well um, and would that be like could you paint could you paint could you paint your plastic pots you can paint your you plastic pots with them but when painting plastic do expect peeling yeah. after a few years because you're going to be watering it and everything as yeah. well do you know it's yeah. going to, and another thing as well a uv filter so um a lot of the outdoor paints will have a uv filter because the uv will fade the color and um, so if they have a uv filter it means that you're going to keep the vibrancy of the color for longer mm -hmm. and then when it comes to walls there's a great brand called santex so I have white walls and um, <coughs> I only have to do them every couple of years and Santex is great because there's little bits of grainy sand in it um, and I've found that has lasted better than the likes of Dulux and stuff because mm. my neighbour has the same white bit and my bit of wall is lovely and white and not flaking uh. and theirs is and they used um, like a big tub of like Dulux outdoor paint but that Santex is a bit dearer but they normally have them in B&Q for like two for 50 I think. Um, that's what we need so I feel like yeah I need to either paint that wall again my back wall or clad it clad it I'd love to clad it clad it not gonna lie and also I, I asked Catherine to bring her drill oh yeah we have to drill holes in her buckets she's got two drills so I was like walking out of her house going pew pew because I want to hang that mirror up but like mainly I want to drill a hole in my back wall for the thing that I bought last year or we'll last week now. the thing um, but no in terms of like non comedogenic um, sunscreens if you just look for like a mineral sunscreen that's mineral better. sun cream sunscreen so because that will sit on top of your skin rather than kind of reacting with your skin and it's not going to clog your pores and that there's keep an eye out because i know that like in america you guys have so many different brands that we wouldn't have here that wouldn't yeah. be um, accessible because somebody messaged me going oh i love your videos but you're always mentioning stuff that i can't get here and i'm like i'm sorry i can only talk about I'm what i've tried like myself do you know and that's not out of ignorance just we don't know what's available in America you yeah don't. but mineral one will always um be better as well for your skin so I always apply that as well to over the top like that's like your last kind of barrier like before your makeup but over your your rest of your skincare yes yeah, so um, look for mineral sun creams and they're generally better for yeah, better for you aren't they? better for you and there's well because <laughs> sometimes it can be hard to find one that doesn't leave that white cast but mm. you just have to because you have to be using the right amount um you did a karen did a really funny reel um recently it's on her instagram page um with the recommended amount of sun cream on your face it's supposed to be half a teaspoon and i know like a lot of people aren't going to go around with tea, yeah they're yeah. not going to be going around with it like your measuring spoon so if you squirt out your sun cream two fingers worth but then if you find that that's too much because it can be a lot if you're starting to apply just apply one finger's worth first let that sink in and do that but then what i wanted to show was that like you do get like a lot of um kind of foundations or bases have let's say spf 30 or spf 50 in them so but like you put like one pump's worth so i try to show that visually how much of your sun's or how much of your foundation you would apply and then how much you should apply if you wanted the spf 50 in that and it, it, you would have to literally put a mask a on a pump of makeup <laughs> on your face i know because like that's what especially if you're out and about in and the i garden. suppose if you're in the garden if you are getting irritated by sun cream i suppose clothing is the best spf clothing isn't it and hats um and don't garden midday i know you well, said that i was yesterday sweating <laughs> out um I, it, we're so close to getting those you know those I was gonna say old lady hats, but we are old oh, lady. Oh yeah, yeah. You know the ones that are just the like golf visors. Like. It's like a little golf and You put it here. It doesn't have like a back. <laughs> oh yeah, like a like a like you can you can have your hair out and it just sits like this. That reminds me of the nineties. Did you wear them in the nineties? I feel like I had them as a kid in the nineties. A little plastic hat. Yes, a visor. visor. Yeah. I'm telling you, we we could happen. Because you have your dungarees. I know we're both wearing like sage today. But um, yeah, just... I think w wear like linen, um, lightweight linen shirts, but obviously have some SPF underneath. But I, d I think if it's irritating your skin, 
and make sure to reapply your SPF as well. Yeah. Because um, yeah, you don't want to be out and about. Oh no, my camera said the maximum time has been reached, so it's basically <laughs> saying stop. Shut up. <laughs> and I don't know if I have much space left. So okay. anything to add? I don't think so. I thought it was like a lovely old chat. I know hopefully now you're able to hear us over the power washing. But and that's also if, urban life. Um, <laughs> if the next time if we don't have enough to talk about, any video suggestions we're open to. So yep. if you want us to go maybe somewhere cute and do a chatty Q and A and maybe visit a garden or go to I mean we we do like going to the L uh, salvage yards and things like that. But so nice. For the next chit chat video because if the similar questions are kind of coming in, we might not have nothing to talk about. But you're even like, like under this, um, leave any questions that you questions. might have in in a thing, and you add. Like, we'll bank put them it to for, a list. Next yeah, week. for the next week, for the next time. next one. Because the next one will be June. Like there's gonna be so mm. much happening in the garden. This is when things really start to come to life. Because I, I feel like we're still in the the prep stage, the mm. working stage. Because I think last year, I think it was July. And it was kind of more maintenance of like the veg and that and like the deadheading. Yeah. But you're able to enjoy the garden that bit more as well. But no, we need to do, if anybody's watching from Ireland, where has nice gardens that we can go visit? Do you um, know what? I've, I've never realised how how abundantly pretty and gardens Ireland has. Like we've mm. a lot of castles and shit yeah. that I didn't know about. Like even when I went to the West last the West. November, I noticed even the drive there. Oh, it was just gorgeous. I just would have loved like you weren't there but I would have loved to have like oh Karen got just... to go and plant trees there I wonder would they let us come down for oh, a would. weekend or something yeah just pl they're rewilding um, with native trees where was it tree farm. what's the name of it home tree farm in home tree farm Clare Clare <laughs> can we go to Milltown Mabe yeah that's where why do I know that name because it's where me and Karen or Joanne got absolutely slush <sighs> good times yeah, they no, have I a singles that. festival as well. <laughs> <laughs> we totally need to go. <laughs> but, get um, your garden down to two. <laughs> yeah, maybe we could find. Actually, if you are like a um, small business, but like a, you do planty things or like charity kind of things, and if you're doing any let planting events, or let us know because. Or if there's any courses, like even if it was like a weekend or like a day's course or something that we could get involved with. Um, and like pass on knowledge because I feel like we're constantly mm. learning, learning, learning. There's so much in this world that we don't know, as in like the garden. I world. know there's the Carlo Festival like last year. Remember we went yes. down to that? We must suss it out. It's the Carlo Flower so Festival. Good. But there's all these little flower festivals that I didn't even know existed. There's um, um, something happening in Waterford. Oh, Waterford's in June. beautiful. Or maybe it's September. It's some harvest festival. Just oh. to kind of keep in mind for like different things to do because listen, we love a day out. <laughs> As you know. I'm Karen's passenger princess. See, I get really bad car sickness, so I usually drive. And I don't think after <laughs> seeing my driving, <laughs> you weren't even in the car, you would want to even get in the car with me. Can I tell you something, right? So <laughs> after she nearly like killed me in the car, it's highly dramatised. She was like, oh, I need to put water in the thing. I'll see you there. At the top of me. Windshield. <laughs> so I, was, I went on my merry way and I was like, oh, she'll be like a few minutes behind me. Well. At one point, I was like about halfway home, and I could see her in the rear view mirror. She was like a bat out of hell. <laughs> I stick to speed limits, no, but I did. think you just got unlucky with red lights, and I caught up. I was just like driving and going, thank God we didn't crash, what would we <laughs> Then last week, do you remember, I went to get coffees, and I, you were at my house before I got oh, back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had filmed it. Karen was she like packed tight. was it? like... Gabe, <laughs> or not Gabe, but my entrance. And you were like, I was going to reverse back, but by the time I reversed back, you had manoeuvred it she in. She was just like, a pack on a penny. And then I could hear like, ums, ums. Pack you on out one. It, it was a romantic song, but it was, who was it? I think it was Bonnie Tyler. It was something, I heard her coming before I could <laughs> see her. Blankety, and then she was like, blankety, <laughs> blankety, <laughs> Anyway. I forgot about that. And yet, as I was saying to Karen, the older we get, the more feral we get. We just embrace our true identities. Do you know? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> oh, now look, it's starting. Hmm? No, when that, the sun comes over like a little bit, that will just be... It's just very relaxing for the most part. But anyway. I keep weeping. Okay, we're going to end this there. Um, Karen's YouTube channel is Lovely Girly Bits. Thanks YouTube, for watching. Follow her on the Instagram as well. The first or the second 
video, or I don't know which one it is, the last one we did, <laughs> if you remind me, I'll pin it in the comments section. Yeah. So you can watch that one. And if you, please give us feedback on what you want to see for the next one. We don't want you to get bored of us just sitting talking shy, basically. Yeah. Exactly. We just because like this. I think there's so many so many questions that we can even answer as well. We, because we we is the how we thing. garden, not how to garden. Yes, that is very more important because a lot of our thing is like experimentation and kind of going. Oh, see if it we works. just stick it in and go see if it works and <laughs> whip it out if it doesn't. <laughs> Give support where needed. <laughs> support the wonky lupins. Thank you. Okay, bye. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, uh, cheeky thumbs up. Check out Karen. Sub if you're new. We and leave that's the not her stomach. That's this thing behind here. Show me. This is the thing that keeps. This is the noise you hear, and it is not my stomach. It just it needs full sun, and I usually sit that in just in case you're wondering to stop it from like moving around because it loses a lot of water that way. But it was only in Amazon. Very handy. I love it. Anyway, thanks. Right. Okay, bye. Give me a wave. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>